Uh, the benefit for me was actually getting out here with some colleagues and you know the, the conversations, the social interaction that you have whilst you're you know sowing the seeds and um, just taking general care of the, of the plants. I'm Shani Mann from Basco Shire Council. The, the fact that they are pretty much maintenance free means that you get to enjoy them more than um, spend a lot of time in there weeding and um, harvesting so much. So we saw an opportunity here in a really drab old courtyard that was underutilised and went about developing a concept for the urban farm. And in doing that, I guess the, the benefits to the organisation we could see were around shared leadership. So having a space where we could come out, have team meetings, socialise, um, utilise the space to, um, to share the responsibility around harvesting, nurturing the produce, and also that community connectedness to giving the produce out to community groups and having the organisation take part in, in seeing the difference that we can make to the community through such a project. So there's the wellbeing aspect of being able to get outside, have host meetings out here in the sun, refresh, um, recharge, re-energise, socialise uh, whilst we're nurturing and harvesting we're socialising, so we're getting to know each other along the way. So there's a number of community groups across the municipality that we'll be sharing the produce with. Okay, I'm Greg Thompson, the manager of Phillip Island Community and Learning Centre, or Pickle, as most of the locals know us. Now, uh, our role in our local community is uh, we are a community centre, we're also an adult learning centre, but more importantly, we've become one of the largest, if not the very largest, food relief outlet in the entire Bass Coast area. And we are a registered workplace for job seekers, and others to come and volunteer, people who come to our central link agency can then come and volunteer in our community garden, they can take home a, a paper bag of uh, produce at the end of the night if they need some immediate food support, but it's also the feel good factor of whatever you've helped to grow that day, you know is either going into a hamper for another needy family or it's going into our cooking program which also go into those hampers. We are pushing a lot for a connection of community gardens right throughout Bass Coast. The benefits of having a trail of different community gardens particularly where people who live in small uh, allotments or in apartments, it provides a place where they can actually come, potter around and uh, not only take home some, some fresh produce themselves, uh, but it also helps stimulate their well-being. One of the schemes we're thinking of using all our volunteers is as a, uh, a flying squad of backyard blitzers. We can actually go and make a, a backyard vegetable garden installation in an elderly person's house or someone who has been isolated. There's also another dimension to what this, this garden represents and that is the work that the Bass Coast Council is doing on their climate action plan. Food supply, it comes with a carbon cost and when you go to the supermarket to, to buy whatever fresh, fresh produce you have thinking that you're doing a wonderful thing even the fresh produce comes with quite a high carbon footprint so when we have a series of local community gardens like this it really does lower the carbon footprint of, of what we're growing locally using locally and uh, looking after our local community the biggest barrier to people participating in community gardens is that they feel that if they go along there and there's no one there with any badge or anything that says you know I'm supervising or I'm in charge or come to me if you need anything the biggest barrier seems to be that people feel that they're trespassing or that they're interloping or you know they shouldn't be there they just need someone on site to say of course you're welcome